darlings, aunts, uncles, friends, foes, how are we doing today? Uh, second video, how exciting. I guess I should have made this a little bit sooner. I know I promised a week in the last video, but so is life. It's been about two weeks. But we have some exciting stuff going on. We have some real exciting stuff going on in the world of improving the wind, too. So this is uh, my second variant. This is my first successful prototype heatsink that I've actually made. There's some real crazy stuff going on here. So we're going to take a dive into that. We're going to be talking about a little bit of the uh, wind tune news and uh, kind of going on what the plans are for the future. So let's get to the meat of the video that everybody's dying to see, the heatsink. So the last one, as you remember, I kind of had like these bonded heat fin assemblies over here and over here. It didn't fit properly. The screws were pretty jacked. I had to cut some crazy notches in there to get try to get them in there. It just didn't work very well. It was garbage. So um, the second revision, what I decided to do, actually, I wonder if I have that on hand. I have another heat sink. It might be easier to show you if I have it. Yes, I do. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I had this off to begin with. There. Cool. So, turn around. It's got a little liquid metal. Might want to be a little careful, but it's fine. So, on the left-hand side, as you can see, I added these. You can't see them now, but if you remember from the last video, they were those silver um, heat sink things. There we go. So, if you remember from the last video... Do I have any on hand? No, I don't. But I do have these. If you don't know what these are, this is also really exciting. They're pretty small. Um, we'll get to those later, maybe. I don't know. But these are the future. So we'll talk about that. But yeah, as you can see, um, the little heat sinks, you can't really see because I have them covered in this uh, HVAC tape. This is aluminum foil tape. This isn't like duct tape. This is actual metal. You can scratch it. Pretty cool. Uh, so this covers up all the air gaps. There's a big air gap over here, and then I had to cut the side of the fan plastic out. So the air flows this way and out this way. Pretty awesome. Again, most high-end gaming computers or performance workstations use the same technology. They blow air from multiple directions. So I figured, hell, if they do it, so should I. So I soldered these aluminum... Let's see if we can see that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, soldered these aluminum heat sinks in there like that, and holy balls, this uh, aluminum very difficult to solder to. What a pain in the ass. Uh, so then what I did, I installed those two, cut the plastic out around the housing, right to about here, and then I put this foil tape all the way around. Trust me, there's no air coming out of this thing anywhere. And I just fit up for aesthetics, I'll just do it over the top as well. Completely pointless, but I don't know, maybe it looks cool, it looks like shit, but it's fine. Uh, then I just cut it out right here for the air to go through. So yeah, this thing is pretty skookum all the way around. Everything is insulated. Even this corner over here, fully insulated. So now the air blows out, oops, this way and then out, just like the stock one does. Oh, and here's the plastic on the side. But yeah, that's gone. Um, let's see, and then, so just like this does, see how it's got like this weird I don't even know what you want to call that. It's like some sort of soft plastic, PTU plastic, or whatever they call that. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I did there. Looks cool. The awesome part, though, is it actually works. It installs perfectly. Everything I designed to mount up perfectly with all the screw holes. Nothing changed. You can't see the screw, but trust me, it's there. Ooh, uh, this screw up here. But trust me, it's there and it goes in perfectly. That was my first thought, is I should have gone for compatibility first. I did, and it works awesome. This one, I run this GPD Win 2, 15 watt TDP, unlimited, well, 128 second, I think, short term power limit, and then unlimited power long term. 15 watt TDP, max load, CPU, GPU, heaven benchmark, Ida 64 engineer edition, uh, CPU benchmark, or load test, whatever the hell you want to call it. Max temperature, 79 degrees Celsius. Max temperature, 79 degrees Celsius. Out freaking standing. 
Uh, seven watts on the stock thermal pace with the stock heatsink, it would have probably been closer to 90. So for doubling, more than doubling the TDP, really without m changing anything that are functionally for the system, awesome. Absolutely awesome performance in this thing. Absolutely awesome. And now it's getting actually to the point where I can almost run this thing passive at idle. So what I want to do, and this isn't really the right tool to use, but I bought one of these. This is not really the right tool to use, but it gives kind of the idea of what I'm trying to do. I want to install some sort of small form factor, maybe like Arduino Pico or something ridiculously small in this area right here. It's about the same size as this, I believe, the Pico is. But what I want to do is hijack the, I think it's the yellow one, the PWM signal. And then um, what I've seen is you can actually set up the timers to be 25 kilohertz on the Arduino, probably attendance right there, and you can hijack this and actually use a, uh, a thermistor between, well, what I would do is I'd probably put it right, there's a divot right under here under this fan shroud. You can see on this one how it's, you know, indented. You could put it right under there and like thermal adhesive it right in there or whatever you want to do. So yeah, I could install a thermistor could read the temperature. It wouldn't be core temperature, but it'd probably be pretty close. Probably be within three to five degrees Celsius, close enough. And then just set it to do some sort of like a, you know, exponential fan curve ramp. And the purpose would be it wouldn't turn on until it'd be like 65 degrees Celsius, maybe 70 degrees Celsius, and then it would do like a an exponential, you know, graph, you know, the the scaling for the RPM. So that'd be pretty cool. So the fan would actually shut off, which would save some power because this is a two and a quarter watt fan, I believe. Not that it used a whole lot at idle, but still it's something there. And it's, you know, cuts out the noise, which is really one of the bigger parts. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Probably just install it right here. It'd be pretty damn simple. Or I can install it actually with this right in here on top of the battery. It's a little bit of space here. That's why these pads are there. So that's the heatsink. total success. I don't know if I'm gonna do another revision if I do. It's gonna do something over here. But uh, yeah, that's that. Okay, cool, let's move on. We've been talking about that for like five minutes, holy shit. Okay, uh, second thing. I've been trying to get the heat, or the heat sink. I've been trying to get this uh, mezzanine card, that's the proper term, for the m to drive onto the back of the actual LCD panel. This plastic piece comes right off and there's like a whole bunch of space in there. Matter of fact, there's so much space you could almost fit a, well, you could actually fit a 2280 uh, form factor size drive. So, you know, you could fit a full SSD on the back. And then what my idea would be is you could actually run, and I have these connectors. Again, let me find them. It's kind of a mess when I'm doing these videos, not gonna lie. Kind of a mess. Um, yeah, here we go. So I actually have the part that's underneath the PCB, this mezzanine card, and it's this on, let me think. Yeah, these are on the motherboard, I believe, or is it these? No, it's, yeah, these ones, I believe, are on the motherboard. Or these ones, I don't remember, I even, <laughs> I don't remember. As you can see, I did try a few times, very difficult. Um, but anyways, the male and female version of the connector. One goes on the motherboard, one would go on the daughter board, and what you could actually do is create a ribbon cable, run it over, Kind of bend it and then just piggyback it onto this one, run it up the hinge through there and then up into here. And then you could just put a 2280 SSD in here. That's my idea. That probably could work. I don't think it, I mean, I don't see any problem with that. I mean, if you rolled it the same way you did with this one, hell, you could probably tape them together and just bring it up into there. I don't think it'd be too difficult, but that need to be made because I tried to use this magnet wire. It's enamel coated, uh, this stuff. It's like 32 or 30 gauge. It didn't work. I don't know if it's a signal integrity issue or what the hell the problem is. I Maybe it's a power delivery issue because it's still, you know, like 40 milliamps, I think, on 3.3 volts or whatever the hell rail it uses. So might not be enough, but I tried. It was a complete failure, but the idea is pretty cool. So maybe that'll work in the future. I don't know. It's kind of iffy up in the air. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, so some news. The new version of the GPD-Win2, the latest batch, so to speak, no longer includes 
Rumble feature. No longer has rumble motors in it. How freaking awesome is that? I don't know why that is. I think it's a part scarcity issue. Maybe. Um, I contacted them to get a replacement right trigger because this one's... It works fine. It's just like when you press it in a certain way, the grommet kind of gets in the way and it doesn't completely press down. So I was like, oh, okay, I need just, you know, just sh ship it to me. It's like a $3 part, right? I'll fix it myself. No problem. Everybody's happy. And it was like a big deal. Like, oh my gosh, we don't have the, you know, we don't have very much inventory of that part. So what I think it is, is they bought like 5,000 of these quantity when they did the production. And then as time goes on, obviously the interest kind of goes down a little bit in the device. Uh, and then, you know, they realize, okay, we can't really sell another 5,000 units because we're already kind of saturating the market. Well, maybe not saturating, but everybody who wants one probably has one at this point. So, you know, when they order, it's going to be in a smaller quantity and therefore the price is going to be much more. And they're probably like, well, it's kind of a insignificant part. So maybe, uh, we don't justify it. So that's my thought why they're not including it in this version. I don't think it's anything particularly, you know, com oops, complex about the part. It's pretty damn simple, pretty straightforward. I just think it's kind of a custom assembly uh, molded part, and that's pretty expensive if you do small quantities. So that's my thought. It's just they're not going to produce another 5,000, so they know that it's going to cost a lot per unit. So yeah, no rumble. So this, the version that you want, and it's actually pretty much ran out from what I've seen from all the suppliers, people who are buying them, is the version, the first version, with the reset button that's like right here by the uh, USB 3.0, where the hell is it? That button right there. Right there. That's a CMOS reset for the BIOS. This one has the upgraded uh, ribbon cable for the LCD to fix all the problems. It's got some improvement for the power charging circuitry, so the fan, or not the fan, but the temperature is improved or something. So the latest revision, which is technically the late August revision, I'm going to call it September because it's September 2nd, and we just started to see people get them. Um, that version doesn't have the rumble, but everything else is pretty much the same as far as I've seen. So I don't think you want that version. Pretty cool, though, because it's going to raise the value of these ones with the rumble. Because let's face it, this is a controller-based device. It's designed to look like and feel like a controller when you're playing your games. It has built-in controller direct, ex in, or direct input functionality. It's a controller. What the hell kind of controller doesn't have rumble? Come on, people. Come on. Um... Yeah, I just think it's a the 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 price of the parts probably going to be a couple times more expensive because they don't have the quantity. Uh, so yeah, you want the the second revision, not the Kickstarter version that doesn't have all the cool fixes or the reset button, but the reset button version with the better ribbon cable. So those seem to be drawing out in supply as well. So I'm assuming the value of these units are probably going to appreciate a little bit. How much I don't really know, but all the suppliers like AliExpress and probably. Um, gear best or drying up but you know i'll leave it at that so i will actually try to make another video reasonably soon so i'll see you guys later